Hi guys, this is Lukman from Rivia. Welcome to our first tutorial within the Unreal series where I'll be teaching you guys some cool tips and tricks to smoothen your workflow. I'm one of the technical artists specializing in virtual reality and in this video we're going to be breaking a window within Unreal Engine 4 using a conveyor system and a destructible mesh plugin. We created this effect for a home automation system and want to show you guys. I've seen a lot of people cover this effect before but I feel they miss out on some key elements. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we have a scene that I set up earlier for a client. It's just a simple modern house with a nighttime setting. I have the effect set up already where the brick falls down, hits the launch system and then flies through the window, which will then break. If I click simulate, you'll be able to see what I mean. As you can see, the brick smashed the window and after an X amount of time, the debris disappeared. Ignore the error message in the corner, it's related to a different blueprint, nothing to do with what we're creating today. Before we do anything, go to the quick settings tab and click on plugins. Scroll down to the physics tab on the left hand side and enable apex destruction. By default, this option is turned off, so make sure to enable this and restart your engine so you can turn your static meshes into destructible ones. Right click on your mesh and select create destructible mesh. I'm going to click and drag this tab like this and place it onto my main window. Having too many windows gets confusing, so having everything on one is easy to keep track of. Rename your object. I'm going to call mine window underscore destructible, but you can call yours wherever you want. Then just double click to open up the editor so we can edit our window. So on the right hand side, we're going to change some of the settings to get a more realistic window break. You can leave the top two as they are, as we don't need to touch them. What you do want to do is toggle impact on and change the value to something higher like 5000 and the damage depth to 1. These settings allow the window to receive damage from objects that collide with it. Next we have to toggle custom impact resistance. This allows our window to have some sort of resistance when our bricks collides with it. I'm going to put the value down to 0.1 because we don't, we don't want there to be too much resistance. If you scroll down to the Debris tab, we only want to change two settings in this tab, the Debris Lifetime Min and Max. I'm going to leave the Min as it is and change the Max to 4 seconds. What Unreal will do is select a random number between those two values and time out the Debris with the chosen value. If you want it to be a more specific time, then just change both values to the same number. Okay, so scroll down to the Flags tab next and we want to toggle two options here. World Support and Debris Timeout. World Support will allow any chunk that, that's overlapping a different static mesh to be supported by that mesh. If I show you in the viewport, you can uh, see the outline of the window colliding with the window frame. So those chunks won't move when our brick collides with the window. Next, toggle Debris Timeout, which will allow any chunk that's uh, broke to disappear as stated by the times we set earlier. Okay, scroll down to the Hierarchy Depth tab. Here we can set the parameters for our chunks. We're going to keep it simple and put the support depth to one. Then toggle Enable Debris, so any chunk that breaks will act as debris and just set the depth of that to like one. Next, put the cell side count up to something higher like 300. This determines how many pieces our mesh is going to have. When that's done, go ahead and click Fracture Mesh and you'll be able to see the result of that. Quick tip, just keep it on Preview Depth one for this next part. So if I select one of the chunks, you'll be able to see how it gets outlined in a blue flag. So we can set the parameter of that chunk on the right hand side, but we only want the do not fracture option. If you press control and click, you can select multiple chunks. We want to select all the chunks around the border. So go ahead and do that. I'm gonna speed this part up. Once we've selected them all, Toggle do not fracture and now those chunks won't fracture when our brick collides with the window. Click save and go back into the viewport. Just drag your window out into your scene and apply a material of your choice to it. I'm going to align my window with the frame so um, I'll be fast forwarding this part too.
Okay, so now to make the launch system. I'm going to delete the one I made already so I can show you guys how to make it from scratch. In the content browser, right click and create a new blueprint and we want to select actor. Just rename that to launch and open it up. In the viewport, we want to create a box collision and an arrow component for the function to work. So click on add component and type in box collision and hit enter. Click add component and add an arrow. Once that's done, scale your box along the X axis to increase the length and scale the arrow back down to keep things neat. Click compile then save. In the event graph, just highlight and delete these three nodes as we won't be needing them for now. Okay, in this space, we're going to be creating two functions. One which will draw a list of primitive components, e.g. stack meshes, to be affected by the other function, which will check every frame to see if a primitive component is overlapping the box. Um, and if it is, it will be launched in a set direction at a set velocity. So first, right click the box components, go to add event, and then click on on component begin overlap and an end overlap. From the begin overlap, drag off and type in add array, then click on it. From the end overlap, drag off and type in remove and click on remove item. On the left hand side, add a new variable, which will be a primitive component reference. On the variable type, click on the drop down and search primitive components, then hit enter. Change the type to an array and rename it to components. So now you want to get the components and plug it into the relevant nodes. Then plug the other component pin into the array node because we're drawing the list of components, not actors. Up here, you want to create an event tick. Drag out and type in for each loop and hit enter. Get components again and plug that into the array pin. From the each loop, drag out and type in get physics linear velocity. and set the target to the array element. From the linear velocity, drag out and type in set physics linear velocity, then hit enter. From the return value, drag out and type in break vector so we can get a list of values. From the x value, drag out and type in make vector. Plug the return value into the new value and set the target to array elements. Promote the y value to a variable and then rename it to velocity. Hit compile and edit the value to something like 1000. So yeah, that blueprint is good to go. Just save and head back into your world editor. Now we just need to place this into our scene.
Last way of setup is the brick, which is basically a cube with the material applied. Check simulated physics, give it a very high mass, set angular and linear damping to one, so the brick doesn't fly all over the place when it gets launched. And then that's the brick done. So now let's watch what we've created. That was a bit quick. Let's just edit the velocity to half so it's not as fast. Hmm, that was a little bit slow. But nonetheless, it works and we can tweak the speed till we find the right velocity. Well that's it for this tutorial guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any ideas how we can improve this video, please leave your ideas and comments down below. We would love to hear from you guys and create something even greater with your help. Also, if you want something specific covered, please let us know and it could be a future video. Well this is Lookman from Revere, thanks for watching.